Hi everyone and welcome back for another video. Today we're checking out procedural animation. It's a really recent concept that became really popular. The main use case is to spice up baked or traditional animations by doing head aiming or object grabbing look much more realistic. But in theory it offers all the tools to animate anything from scratch. But it's easier on some creatures than others. For example, this geeko or this spider are 100% procedurally animated. It looks amazing. It adapts according to the relief, to the speed and the feet always stick to the ground. So I wondered, how feasible is it to animate an humanoid avatar only using procedural animation? This is what this series of video will be about. I can already tell you that we will have a lot of fun and some great accomplishments on the way. In this video, we will set up the environment as well as make a first script to control our feet position. If you don't have any 3D character to work with, I highly suggest you to pick up a free character on Mixamo. They're pretty well rigged and they look good. I personally picked up this one. He's called Leonard. Leonard. He's called Brian, and I'm pretty sure he will do a great job at learning how to walk with us. Once I imported the character into Unity, for some reason, I lost the materials on the way. Well, that's not a problem, I'm just going to pimp it myself. Okay, that's way better. Then I added a few obstacles on the way. The purpose of this challenge is to cross them all with a really natural behavior. To be honest, that won't be easy, and I'm expecting Brian to twist his ankle a few times. Then we need the most basic controller ever. Like many controllers, it will be based on a capsule with a rigid body attached to it. Then we just create a script. But don't worry, it's going to be a really simple one. Told ya. As you can see, it's really simple, but it's doing the job. And we'll improve it later if needed. As I said, all we need is the collider and the rigid body. So we're just going to remove the mesh finder and the mesh filter because they're not needed anymore. And instead, let's just put Brian at the center of the capsule. Now we just want to make sure that Brian is actually moving with the capsule. If you want to do an ice skating game, the tutorial is over. But all the others, just stick with me, because this is where the fun part begins. The final step of the setup is to install the animation rigging package. There are plenty of videos explaining how this works, but in the main line you need to go in Window, Package Manager, make sure that you can download preview packages and just download the package. After you waited forever, you should have a new tab on the top. It should contain Rig Setup. So you just select Brian and click on Rig Setup. It will create a new empty game object with a rig component onto it. A rig can contain one or more constraints. For this example, let's say that we want to move the right arm so that you understand better how it works. To do this, we're going to use a two-bone IK constraint. We just need to make a new game object into the rig's R key and attach two-bone IK constraint to it. As you can see, we need to set up targets that we're going to pick up directly from Brian's skeleton. Make sure to pick up the right bones, otherwise you will end up with pretty funny results. In my case, I had to put the hand at the tip, the forearm at the mid, and the arm at the root. If you're working with a humanoid too, it should be the same. Now you can clearly see inverse kinematic constraint in action. Just by setting a target for the hand, it actually bends Brian's elbow. Now we need to extend this idea for the legs, which was more difficult than I thought. By default, my knees were bending sideways. Somehow, I could get this pretty decent result by adding an aiming constraint to the leg. When I was happy with my left leg, I just repeated the same process but symmetric to the right leg. Then I made sure that both legs were behaving exactly the same. As you can see, we can already take some nice poses. But let's go a bit further. Instead of moving targets by hand in the scene view, we're going to move them via scripting. 
Obviously, we need to expose target's transforms. We will also keep in memory a few vectors that will be useful in the future. As a first script, I thought it would be nice to make sticky feet. Even if the body is moving, we don't want the feet to move. To do this, we just need to set back the previous position for each target. The result is really simple, but it proves that procedural animation has a great potential. And now that all the setup is done, it's just a matter of finding the right algorithm to move the transforms. In the next episode, we will try to do our first steps. To do so, we will have to deal with balancing and coroutines. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe not to miss the next one. See you next time. Cheers.